Hello friends, I'm Anita. I'm back with another video and today I wanted to do my fantasy festival book haul because I received one of the two books that I was missing and although it would be nice to have the last one I just sort of wanted to have this video up now but I don't know when the other book is going to come because I haven't heard anything about whether it's on its way or anything um, and I also haven't actually paid for that one yet because it was one that was sent to me and they were sent me a bill along with it so I can pay for it there. Anyway, let's get started with what I got. I end up, I think, getting 27 books on the Fantasy Festival so I definitely bought more than I thought I was going to. I'm going to try and take you with me on the trip so I'm going to try and see if I can remember in what order I bought them and let you know about why and what I think they're about. I have a lot of books here that are by Danish fantasy authors and I'll get more into why I bought so many later. The first thing I got was actually something I've already read um, and I love this and you know this if you followed me on my channel for the previous couple of years. It is the second volume of Valhalla the Collected Saga in my old copy now. Um, it's my favorite of them, but the reason I didn't get the first one is actually because I had it on my birthday wish list. I didn't end up getting it, um, but I didn't know. Um, my, par my family usually don't give me books. Um, they give me more practical things that I wouldn't go and buy myself anyway. So, um, But I did have this on my wish list, in and in case they bought it, I didn't want to have multiple copies, and they were really cheap. At the Fantasy Festival, um, they were cheaper than it is at the publisher's homepage. Um, so I decided to get one. And so I got Valhalla 2, which contains 4, 5 and 6 of the stories. And 4, 4 and 5 are my favorite <laughs> in the whole series um, because they are containing... Ooh, they feature the story about Quark. And Quark is this little guy who is absolutely adorable and so yeah I got this one I'll get the remaining four editions um, along the way as I sort of start to collect them um, but these are so pretty and yeah so I wanted to have my own copies just right after I bought that I was at the next stand right beside it and the author was there he was talking about his book and he was just staring at me and he was being really nice. The thing is that these authors were all so incredibly nice and awesome to talk to them. And I haven't read very many Danish fantasy books. And so I ended up getting this one. Um, it was released on the same day. It has just had like um, re the release party. I was getting champagne and Ferro Rochers. <laughs> I was like, oh, I need to buy this book. I felt like this pressure, <laughs> but I was also intrigued. So I got this Volcano Winter, which is the first in the Pandora series by Christian Inkele. Um, I'll try and tell you what it's about from the back. Um, so in Southern Asia, uh, um, a super volcano uh, has a volcano eruption, which bring along a lot of climate changes all over the earth um, so the civilization is almost um, becomes instinct and so this is set 30 years after this happened and the sort of small civilizations as they are trying to get back to things so I don't know it sounds like a dystopian but I'm not sure if it's also some has some fantasy elements to it um, so yeah I was interested I'm going to try and read it. The next thing I went in hunt for is another book that I've already read, that I recently read actually. Uh, just I finished it on the day of the fantasy festival on my way in the car and I really enjoyed it and it is Roses and Violet in this really stunning real life edition that is not my library copy. It has this beautiful beautiful dust jacket um, and it's like the library copy underneath it. So it still has that pretty cover underneath it. Who doesn't love like beautiful naked hardbacks as well as beautiful covers in general and look at how pretty the spine is. I'm, I love this um, and this is a really great book. I gave it four out of five stars and I'm definitely interested in reading more from this author in the future. And at the same 
publishing stand. I talked to one of the people who worked there um, and he was talking about, we we're just generally talking about books in general. And I was looking at these and he was asking me if I knew anything about these books. And I was like, no, not really. Um, and he said that if I had read Robin Hobb and I was like, well, duh, <laughs> she's like my favorite author. And he was like, yeah, but he, he writes similarly to Robin Hobb. Um, and so I was immediately intrigued and sort of had to buy it. And there was a, it was cheaper for me to buy both of the books, the one that's just been released and the one that was released last year. So instead of just buying one of them, I bought both. And the first one is called Villa Minus Net, which it might be in terms of the star sign areas or it's a ram. But it says Arias men, the men of Arias is night or something like that. <sniffs> and then the other one is called the path of blood or uh, the blood's path or something like that. And this one was just released. These two are signed by the authors. I forgot to show you, but this one is signed. It says, um, enjoy <laughs> um and this one is signed as well i'm happy they all asked me how to spell my name because i've often had teachers spelling my name with two t's or two n's or two of both and i'm like why don't you ask me before you just write my name with a bunch of letters that's not in it that's so annoying but i didn't get these two signed even though he was at the stand sometimes he was not there when i actually bought these so whoops and then right after i bought this I was walking around, I was feeling like it was super heavy, um, everything was heavy. So I decided to go and put all of these books, these five books, like because hot copies are really heavy, um, into my car, which was parked like ten, five to ten minutes away from the library. And when I came back, I was like, I was, I was sort of feeling like just sitting down and maybe reading something, but I haven't brought any books. So I immediately went to this stand that had English <laughs> fantasy and sci-fi, which is called Fantastic. It's a brilliant shop and I'm so sad it only exists in Copenhagen. At the fantasy festival, it's where I usually buy the majority of my books and I bought nine books. But the first four books I'm going to show you now, because those are the ones I bought. Right, I, I get back. The first thing I got is probably one I'm not sure I'm happy with, but no, it's probably the least fantasy heavy one. It's probably leaning closer to sort of contemporary fantasy, um, but it's called These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. This is about, this is set in Salem in Massachusetts. So I thought it sounded interesting. I do enjoy these witch type of paranormal books. Um, and it just says, Hannah's witch, but not the kind you're thinking of. And says, it's, she's the real deal, an, an elemental with the power to control fire, earth, water and air. But even though she lives in Salem, Massachusetts, her magic is a secret she has to keep to herself. If she's ever caught using it in front of a reg, reg read non-witch, she could lose it for good. So Hannah spends most of her time avoiding her ex-girlfriend, Veronica hanging out with her best friend and working the fly-by-night cauldron selling candles and crystals to tourists, scars and local Wiccans. So yeah, I'm interested. I sort of like this, but I think it's more contemporary than it is fantasy, but I don't know. We'll have to see when I get to it. Next up, I got a book that I've already read and that is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Yes, I say it the different way because Terry Pratchett is my favorite author. <laughs> um, I read this, I got it in the white copy because I sort of, there was this and the black copy available and I was like, well, everyone has the black one, I want to stand out, so I got the white one. <laughs> I don't know, there's not a real purpose behind it and they were the same price, so I got this one. This one was because I remember Kitty from Kitty D talking about it a long time ago and I think it's dark fantasy and it is Blackwing by Ed MacDonald. Um, I don't know what it's about. It says only three kinds of people wing willingly enter the misery, the desperate, the stupid and the greedy. The misery is a wasteland, a dangerous corrupted frontier between the Republic and the Deep Kings. 
And when traitors, thieves and spies try to flee, they run for the misery and often as not its captain, Ray Holt Galharo's job to bring them to heal beneath the fractured skies, provided they haven't already fallen prey to the twisted creatures that inhabit the shifting polluted sands. It's a deadly place even for a man of Galharo's experience. Sounds interesting. And the last thing I got there was one I got because I read another book by this author and I loved it to bits and I would like to read more. Um, I was actually going to start out by reading it from the library, but since it was there, I just decided to buy it. <laughs> that is City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is obviously the same author who wrote The Founder Side. I really enjoyed Founder Side and his writing was really interesting. I like his world buildings, so I hope that this one is the same. I've heard good things about it at least. So anyway, um, I didn't get to read very much of any of these. I sort of, I think I've read a chapter of these switches don't burn and I think I started a on the chapter of Blackwing but I never got around to anymore because then I had to go to a reading or it's not kind of panel I don't know it's like it's only the author one author there and he's just talking about whatever he feels like in this year's um the VIP um people from not non-Danish authors was Peter V. Brett and Julie Kagawa. I didn't go to Julie Kagawa's reading because I wasn't super interested. I haven't, I've only read two books by her and I kind of enjoyed them, but it's so long ago and I haven't really felt like picking any of the books up, but I'm really intrigued about Peter B. Brett. I've never read anything by him, but after I sort of heard about him talk about the books that he's writing and the way he builds his characters and uh, all of that, I decided I wanted to read at least the first of them, but then I saw when I got back to this stand called Fantasque that I could get the whole series for, I think it was 300 kroners um, instead of, and one of them was like 80 kroners, which means I obviously got all five of the books in the Demon Cycle, isn't that what it's called? The first one is called The Warded Man or Painted Man depending on if it's American or UK. I think the second one is called The Desert Spear. The third one is called The Daylight War. And the fourth one is called The Skull Throne. And the fifth and final one in the series is called The Core. And I'm super excited to try out his book. So these are all of the books that I bought on the first day. So not too bad at this point, but there's another whole other day where I was walking around, waiting around for my things to happen. I started the day off by going to a blogger vlogger event where two authors were present. One of them being Julie M. Day. The other one is Mikkel Wendelbo, um, both authors of fantasy books. It was a really fun thing and it talked a lot about how um, I guess how difficult it could be to be a, a fantasy author in Denmark because fantasy is a pretty minor genre in Denmark. Um, if you have to earn anything, if you have to make money out of being an author in Denmark, you have to write crime novels or literary fiction and stuff, stuff like that gets awards and stuff. But if you're a fantasy author, you get a small amount per book that you sell, but in Denmark that is possibly what, how many, maybe 5% of the book sales or something like that in, in total. And it's all just um, scrummed in a corner with all of the kids' books. And that's just, yeah. Um, for some reason, I, since I heard about all of these books, I just realized I wanted to support Danish authors a lot more than I already do. Um, I do get them out of the library, so I support them in that way, but I also sort of wanted to buy some of the books and just get sort of um, try to read a little bit more and force myself to read more Danish authors in general. The only problem is that only maybe, I don't know how much out of the Danish literature that is ever getting translated, but it's very, very little. So I know that a lot of these books um, would probably not be something that any of you would be able to read if you're outside Denmark, unless it's like Scandinavia, where there's a bigger possibility of it being translated into those languages. 
um, which is also sad, um, but I guess um, something that is um, unavoidable, I guess. I'm not exactly sure where I started my book buying on day two, but I'm, I think it might be this one. Um, it's either this one or two other books, but I'm going to start out with this one and tell you a little bit about why I bought it. It's the only one that is not either in its true language, like those in English or Danish authors. This is the only translated author from a German author, actually. And it's called Duft Apotheket is the Danish title of it. The English title would probably be the, the Smell Apothecary or Smell Pharmacy, maybe. And it just so sounds so whimsical and fun and just like a kind of fun middle grade that I enjoy. It says it smells weird in the old villa. A thousand of things at once. It's the first thing that Lucy notices when her, it becomes the, her new home in this boring little town. But no one knows where the smells are coming from. Along with her neighbor, Benno, and the neighbor kid, neighbor kid, Matt, they start to find go for a hunt for these different smells in the villa. In the hidden room with shelves filled with from floor to ceiling, with different sort of bottles with smells, they find out that all of bottles doesn't just smell, they have and have nice surprises they can actually destroy and be full of danger as well and that's one of them they should have never opened and I was just really intrigued and I love this cover and yeah so it's by Anne Rue and I am and I'm interested in reading it I'm pretty sure these were the next ones that I got the first one <laughs> is actually the first in the series of and I know this is adult fantasy adult Danish fantasy is hard to come by this is also adult Danish fantasy, more gritty than all of the other. And I think the rem the remaining part of it is probably young adult. Um, but this one is definitely adult fantasy. And this specific publisher uh, is known for publishing mo mostly only adult fantasy. So, And the book that I got is In Death and Onwards. It's called in Danish A Døden og Videre. Um, and it is by Jakob Kokkedal, which... I think he follows me on Instagram, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, and it's the first book in a series called The Faithful Brother. I'm interested. The next one I also got from this specific um, publishing house is called Sumperon's Reise, which I think <laughs> is translated to Swamp Baron's Journey, maybe? Or, or Marsh? Marsh Baron? I'm not sure. Um, but along with this book, I also got this. An acorn thing with things inside. And apparently our main character is carrying this around a lot. I don't know what it has to do with the book, but I guess I'll find out. I think this is gonna be fun. Hopefully I will enjoy it. It looks cute. <laughs> it looks interesting. I know that Kirsten has read this, but I'm unsure if she actually enjoyed it or not. I was short of a middle of the world book for her, but now I've bought it, so I'm interested in reading it, obviously. Now, the next thing that I got was books by the author from the blogger vlogger event that I went to. So the first thing I got was I actually got all five books from the series by M uh, Miguel Wendelbo, which is this. At least he doesn't write extremely long books. But the first one is called The Girl from Fenfield. I don't know what to call it. I hate translating titles. It's not going to be good. Um, this is the first book in the series. And it is a series that has elves, like typical fantasy creatures. But it also has dinosaurs. And that is definitely the main reason I wanted to check out this author. And I read the first chapter and kind of liked it. I like the writing style, so I think it's going to be fun. And this one is only like 250 pages, the first book. So it's an easy way to get into an author's work. And he has uh, been designing the covers himself. The second one in the series is called In the Demon's Web, like a spider's web. And the third one is called 
on elf feet. <laughs> Has a nice dinosaur on the cover. The fourth one is called The Soul Thieves Story or History. And the last is, and final one is called The Prince's Revenge or something like that. We have different names for princes and princesses and sort of that, but I looked it up and it says this word is sort of means a prince. So I'm going to call them that. And they are all by Miguel Venelbo. After I bought that, I went in hunt for the other author from this event who has written a trilogy. The, the last and final book in that series was just released at this event, but the last and final book was, um, they didn't have more copies at the Fantasy Festival, it was sold out. So in order to get my discount books, I need to buy all three books um, and sign up for the last one to come in my mail. And that's what I've been waiting around for. So the first one is called Grenzen til Trafellas, which is called The Borders of Trafellas. The first one in the, the Halfs Legacy, I guess. I have zero idea what this is about. I know it's about elves as well as the other books by Miguel Venable. Uh, I figure it might have something to do with tigers as well. Maybe shape-shifting. Um, but otherwise, I have zero ideas. I think it's more young adult. I'm not sure. I think it has something to do with romance. I'm not sure. Miguel talked a lot about how he killed off a lot of characters, so I'm interested in seeing who. I'm pretty sure that she also killed off a couple of her characters. So that is also interesting because you can't have a war if no with no casualties. So no, the series is called The Borders of Trafellas. The first book in that series is called The Halves Legacy. I guess the handle is Ow. And the second one is called Skugging for Noah or The Shadows from the North. This tiger is still making a presence, so I feel like it has something to do with it. There are horses in the background. It looks fun. I know Kirsten from Lazy with Fantasy loves this series. She gave the first one five stars, the second one five stars, I think. I don't th know if she actually reads her book on her site, but I'm pretty sure I saw that on Goodreads where she just does put a rating on it. Um, and the last and final one, which was just released, is called The Last Alliance, The Final Alliance or something like that. And it doesn't have the tiger, so maybe the tiger is dead. Or they just changed the cover type. I'm not sure. It has a dragon though. It's nice. Uh, pretty neat dragon. So I'm interested in reading this nonetheless. And I'm looking forward to see how it's all going to be going. Um, as I go along on this journey. So we're getting closer to the end now. The last and final thing that I got at the Fantasy Festival. I have one more book on my way, as I said, I will show it in my next book haul. I will have one final book haul of the year, I think, which will come up, I think, sometime in October. I have pre-ordered a couple of things. I've pre-ordered one thing. I have bought a couple of books from Book Depository because I need to read them for projects. Um, and that is what I'm, and to, to be able to cover my project for the remainder of the year. And that is why I've bought these. Um, otherwise, I don't have to buy many bo any more books, so I'm trying to not buy more books until next year. So yeah, but this book I actually didn't buy for myself, I bought it for my nephew. Because on the stand, that's the stand I bought the most of the books from the most different authors. Oh. Um, yeah, um, but they had a selection of picture books for like next to nothing. I think it was 20 kroners, which is the equivalent of about $3, I think. Um, maybe three and a half dollars, I'm not sure the exact calculations of it, but I definitely needed to find something from my nephew. My nephew loves looking through picture books, but he these pages are a little too thin that I don't think it's gonna be a good idea to read them right now. But this is a Christmas book, so I felt like maybe by the time Christmas arrives, he is able to look through it with me. And so I got him The Real Christmas Tree by Patricia Todd, which is illustrated by Jarvis, and it is translated by Gry Kamp Jensen, who wrote Roses and Violets. So 
I read through it already. I read it at the Fantasy Festival because I was waiting around. And it's just insanely cute and filled with beautiful illustrations um, that I think are both colorful and not with too much text. So it might be something my nephew would love to uh, read with me. Um, and we're celebrating Christmas with my nephew this year. So yeah, I might read this to him on Christmas day, on Christmas Eve or something like that. And yeah. So those are all of the books that I bought at the Fantasy Festival. I was really happy to go to the Fantasy Festival again. I was invited by Kirsten. Kirsten is the, the creator of the Fantasy Festival. I think it's an amazing event that she's created. And I really love going there each year, even though I've only been there twice. It's been an experience already. I went to so many great readings and I will talk more about it in my vlog that will come up next week. Anyway, this is all I had for you today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Goodbye!